Can everyone see the screen? Hello? Yeah, I can see it. So, Johan, um, Daniel, and Conrad, you're in charge for um, the handling the session for um, presentation, hands on, and um, break, break in, the, in the middle. Okay. Thank you. I'm going back to the main room. Okay, let's get started. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the advanced section of Google's training. My name is Dong Han. I'm from Sandia National Laboratories, working in the Google's team. Um, and I'll be doing the first section of this hierarchical parallelism. We also have Daniel and Conrad here, from also from Google's team, who are going to be doing the next sections. Um, yeah. So to get started with, by now you are familiar with the flat parallelism method that Coco supports, namely the range policy or MD range policy. And occasionally, even um, through the, these past this parallelism, you can also have a, opportunities to have a further ex, um, exploit parallelisms and algorithms. And these are the cases where there are non-tightly nested loops in the parallel region, such that there's going to be a clear distinction on which hardware resources used in each parallel region. And in this case, the idea of hierarchical parallelism can be applied to potentially further improve performance. Um, so this section will go over some detail on what Coco supports and provides for manipulating these abstract nested levels of parallelism, um, which will help mapping kernels into different hardware resources and uh, potentially also improve performance. Okay, so let's start with a simple example here. We have a simple inner product, Y transpose AX over a matrix N by M, and then it's implemented using parallel reduce. Um, so let's see, the parallel reduce is um, parallelized over N rows right now, and then internally each thread will do a internal for loop, um, do internal computation, and then we'll do a reduction, uh, we'll do, do the reduction um, for each thread, uh, by each thread into the final result uh, value called result. So this is this is the computation, but the problem we find is that if there is a relatively small number of n, then we are lacking number of rows to properly saturate over GPU. In other words, if the uh, number of n is low, then the parallelization is going to be limited. So to resolve this, um, there are some options. One of the options is to use atomics, and the other option will be to look into the, uh, the thread teams. OK, so here is implementation using the atomics. Um, you can see that in attempt to saturate all threads as quickly as possible, it's parallelizing over n by m matrix, the entire matrix. And then internally, it's doing the internal computation again, the same way. And it's now doing the atomic add for each thread. Now, this, um, as it may seem obvious, is not very optimal way. It's very poor in performance because it will be doing atomic operation on every thread in each loop. So we uh, preferably don't want to do that. So instead of trying to saturate threads like that, you can consider having each row doing its own parallel launches. And in this little snippet we have, uh, we have an inner parallel reduce. And in this case, we will uh, each row will be managing its own set of threads in the inner loop layer. So, and then in this case, it will be uh, representing a hierarchical work because each layer is doing its own um, parallel execution. So we can exploit the hierarchical parallelism using a concept called the thread teams. And thread teams is simply a collection of threads. It's nothing more than that. Um, but um, within the team, the threads can run concurrently and the team uh, threads can synchronize with other threads within the team, but not with other uh, threads in the other teams. So with this, we can think of a strategy where we still do a parallel launch over n rows, but instead of spawning n threads, we'll be doing a n teams. 
So each team will now handle a row and um, each, um, each role will do their comp internal computation. And after that, each team will perform a intra-team reduction. Uh, so just within the team, which within each team. And lastly, um, when all teams are done, they will perform a inter-team reduction to produce a final value. So how to do this in Cocos? We have, um, yeah, so we in Cocos, we have a parallel structure that takes in a execution policy. So in case of a flat parallelism using range policy, it calls a parallel four or, or parallel reduce. And it um, takes in a range policy as execution policy followed with a functor that um, each thread should call. Instead of this, we can use a um, team policy for hierarchical parallelism. And um, instead of a range policy, it takes in team policy and team policy will take in, or will take um, the number of teams and then the team size representing the number of threads that will be used in each team. And also followed by a functor that each team will be responsible for. So within the functor, um, the difference between the functor that will be used for the range policy and then the ones that are used in the hard code parallelism uh, with the team policy is that it needs to know about the team member of that team policy. So in this operator, uh, in this functor we have, it will take in a team member. And then using that team member, um, you can call for a number of properties of, a, of the team, including the league size, the league rank, uh, team size, team rank, or call the team barrier to synchronize with other threads in that team. Okay, so to further implement the rest of the functor, uh, going back to the example, the inner product example we had, uh, we want to now construct the inner parallel reduce doing some kind of reduction. And then we want to do that over the all the columns, uh, the M columns, and then the inner um, computation. Now, because we want to um, do the parallel execution, we will be using Cocos parallel reduce. And then each parallel reduce will do a parallel execution within the, uh, within the inner loop, uh, inner functor. And then this will cause a nested parallel patterns within this structure. So with a per in the inner parallel reduction, um, the execution policy that needs to be used is one of the execution policy that can be used is a team thread range. Uh, this Cocos team thread range is essentially similar to the range policy in that it will cause the, the, um, the threads in the team to specify which um, which range that it should be responsible for. So in this case, it will be responsible for uh, the call number of columns M here. And internally, it will still take in a functor. Um, and then the functor will be, res uh, uh, will be uh, described with the internal computation that each team will be responsible for. Uh, yeah. And then um, here we will do a final, yeah, so here we will do a final a contribution back to the outer loop, um, outer reduction in this case, where each team will be doing its own um, contribution back to the host, uh, back to the, uh, the, uh, the final result for the value. So in this case, it will be a contribution per team so do note that um, each thread, um, which portion of the work will be given to each thread will be completely architecture dependent. Um, so it wouldn't be specific to each thread uh, doing a particular set of the work given in, described in this value of M. And also do note that there doesn't, it doesn't need to be relevant, uh, the value of this M doesn't have to be a multiple of the team size. So the team size being the number of threads in the team. Let's see, I have a message in the chat here. Let's take a look real quick. 
Okay, yeah. I'll take care of the chat, Donghan. Okay, thanks. Okay, so here's the overview of the previous algorithm um, using the team policy. So we have an outer parallel loop um, now taking a team policy instead of a range policy. And it'll take in, it'll need to specify the number of teams and then also the team size again. And then the inner loop um, will now take in a team thread range with a team member and then the uh, range that the this particular team needs to be responsible for. And of course, the outer and then inner parallel um, loop can be any combination of parallel four or parallel reduced um, that Cocos provides. And then note that we have a lambda here that's not a Cocos lambda. For device field, it's crucial that it's uh, that needs to be a notation um, using the regular C++ capture. It cannot be using a Cocos lambda in an inner um, parallel loop. Um, so the, also the execution policy in the inner lambda here, uh, in this case, will be a team thread range. Um, it needs to be a form of team thread range. Um, the reason I'm saying form of it is because there is one other, one other um, policy that can be used in the inner lambda, which I'll cover in a bit and a little later in this section. And also the team thread range cannot be nested with other team thread range. Okay, so for the team size, we've been specifying that the policy, team policy takes in a number of teams and then also a value for the team size usually, or it takes in a team size to specify how many threads will be available for um, each team. Now that value is not always um, obvious upfront. So it's um, recommended that, um, you can, that you use Cocos Auto to have Cocos figure out what that value is for you. Uh, and then uh, for GPU builds though, um, these, the value of a, the team size will become either a team of 32 or, or within a team, it will be 32 or 64 threads um, being executed in a st per step. And these numbers correspond to essentially the warps, um, uh, the warp sizes. And the maximum team size will be 1024, which is a maximum size of the blocks, uh, the block the threads in the block. And the recommended team size that Cocos um, Auto will choose is going to be um, 128 or 256 in this case. Okay, so let's do our first exercise. Um, let's see, the, does everyone have access to the uh, exercise directory? Yeah, does anyone not have any access to it? Okay. Um, if you have access to the uh, ex exercise directory, um, then there is an exercises um, directory with a team policy. And then within that po uh, team policy, there will be two directories. There will be one with uh, that's named begin, and there will be another named uh, solution. Um, the solution will contain solution. So start with begin. And the goal is to replace, uh, there will be a, um, the Y transpose AX, the inner, um, the inner product that we saw earlier. Um, the goal is to replace the range policy that was implemented in and then trans um, replace it with a team policy. Um, yeah, so use a team policy uh, as the implementation and then you can use auto for team size. And with the inner loop, replace it with a parallel reduce that uses the team thread range policy. Uh, you can try experimenting with the different layouts and different value of, oh, sorry, different value of N here, um, also with different value of S's to experiment and see what kind of a memory access bandwidth we get depending on the implementation. Okay, for um, more time. So yeah, let's move on then. Okay, so this is what the solution would look like, a form of it at least. Um, I believe this is similar to what's uh, presented in the solution, um, the, the solution one um, in the same exercise. So 
We start with having a team policy here. Um, convert that team policy and use a Cocos Auto as um, recommended. And then start, uh, we have this Cocos Lambda, um, it's the same way, and it now takes in a team member. And, um, and then each row will be given to each team member of a league rank. So our, yeah, each team member, in this case, a team of threads. And the team will be responsible of doing, uh, doing the parallel reduce internally and using a, parallel, a team thread range yeah, with a team member inter sorry, a bit over um, the size of M as the columns. So internally, it will do an inner update, uh, the intermediate update of values, and then do an inner computation. And then this value across all threads within that team will be accumulated into this value of uh, this row sum. And then that value is going to be further, um, going to be um, aggregated into this value update, which is the value that's provided as the um, our second argument to the functor for the outer reduction. And lastly, um, this um, the all values from all teams will be reduced into one value called result. Any questions on this? Has anyone uh, actually tried the exercise and obtained some results? Yeah, um, yeah. I was just taking a quick look at the, um, the question docs, but yeah, let's move on to the result. So yeah, okay. So here is a graph. Um, this is a graph generated from another exercise, the one that uses the flat parallelized version of it with before the team reduction, uh, before doing the team policy optimization. Um, it's using um, it's using an older architectures, uh, so the numbers on the bandwidth uh, might be very, uh, might be uh, different from what we see nowadays, but um, at least the trend will be similar. So. Recall that the reason we were looking into doing this uh, team policy with the hard parallelism was to exploit the problem or resolve the problem of um, what happens if the number of rows is too small. And as you can see, um, looking at the GPU case, the red line in particular, you can see that the, the speed up starts to only pick up um, when the number of rows is sufficiently large. And then when the number of rows is extremely large, it starts to plateau and then eventually it will start falling off um, after the plateau, after it's done with the plateauing the uh, memory access bandwidth, uh, kind of will be in a similar pattern with how it was done in the nice landing. But yeah, it's not shown the later stage of it. Now with the team's optimization we just did, um, yeah, on the same exercise, you just applying the team um, up, team policy optimization with hard kill parallelism. You can see that the speed up starts to pick up a lot earlier in the sense that we start plateauing around the number of rows of a thousand, where before it had to um, wait past ten thousand of rows to start picking up the performance, and then it, uh, of course it will start it will plateau um, with the bandwidth again. But it, you can see that it will start falling off in terms of bandwidth a lot earlier than um, than the previous implementation without teams using the flat parallelism. So, yeah, we our initial goal of trying to accomplish uh, trying to resolve the problem with a low number of rows is um, can be um, can be partially resolved using this teams method. Okay, so there is another level of hierarchy that we can exploit. And then that is a level that, uh, that is a layer that is in the loop, the inner loop. And then if that inner loop is a vectorizable loop, then we can use a um, thread vector range here. This is a, another Cocos construct that is, used, um, that is used as execution policy internally uh, in place of, or not in place of, but in, in where um, the parallel call, parallel launch call will be happening. So this call will um, vectorize the loop 
um, vectorized and specified loop. And then the value of the vector length is going to be provided in the construction of the team policy. By default, the value is going to be one, um, but it can be specified to any value um, as long as it fits into the loop. So we don't, there's no uh, explicit way to access the vector lane ID, but, um, but it's also possible that the, the global, region, uh, global parallel region can have a vector lanes to be active, to be, par uh, to be parallelized using the thread vector range. And then there is a third execution policy called a team vector range, Google's team vector range. That is a, essentially a combination of a team thread range and then the thread vector range but their use cases are um, slightly different, but yeah. So here's another overview of the nested parallelism. So the outermost level, we again have a parallel, uh, parallel launch here um, that takes in a team policy, number of teams, number of size, and you can see that it now takes in a vector length um, defaulted to one if not specified. And then as an inner loop, we have a parallel launch that takes in a team thread range um, the same way as before. And inside of the parallel, inside of the parallel region for the team thread range, we now have another parallel launch um, that takes in a thread vector range. And then this thread vector range will take in other uh, its own parameter for the range that it will be responsible for. And aside from these two are, um, team thread range and then thread vector range, if um, the algorithm um, if the algorithm permits, then you can also use the team vector range instead of these two structure. But as you can see, it, this team vector range only takes in one value. So if you need to look over multiple um, indices, then perhaps team thread range plus the thread vector range might be more sufficient. There's a question in the chat. Oh, okay. For threat vector range, do we have to work with types other than double or float? For example, some cock or SIMD abstraction? Um, let's see, threat vector range, do we have to work with types other than? Since we're a small number of people, I don't know if it's better if I unmute and try to ask with words. Ask away. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so basically, this is you know, on there's libraries that allow you to do SIMD vectorization, right? Sort of manually, and they abstract away the underlying SIMD type. So for for this thread vector range, would I still do like a double ref? whatever, like, like let's say if I have a Cocos view, do I just index it normally? Or if I have a, do they get passed in as doubles? Or is there anything weird I need to do with the sort of vector ranges compared to the thread ranges um, in terms of indexing things or uh, dealing with doubles? Or like if I wanted to get an element out of a Cocos view, um, would I do double, blah equals view ijk or would i have to do like auto blah equals ijk no i don't think you need to do anything special for the team vector range only thing that team vector range is going to be different from the team thread range plus the team vector range is essentially just a range right in team okay. vector, yeah in team thread range plus the team vector range you're nested and then you have a two um indices you can work with whereas team vector range you're um, for this implementation, um, you have one um, range that you have to work with. So that's the only difference. That there's no specific types you have to alter just by using team vector range. Okay, thank you. Also, conceptually, the parallelism is not ex exposed explicitly. Like, you don't see how many threads you're using a team vector range. Okay, Unless right. you, pro you provide it with a vector length at the top but how that is parallelized internally is, is not visible. Uh, As okay. opposed to SIMD types where you explicitly right. say, hey, 
this operation is done in parallel or like at the same time, whatever. Okay. All right. That helps a lot. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So for the single pattern, um, yeah. So for the previous examples, we've been using if um, team rank equals zero updates some particular value for the outer loops. We've been cons con consistently been using that to restrict the execution to uh, for that particular line to be a once per team across all teams. Now, Cocos provides this Cocos single um, construct that can be used um, uh, to do exactly this. And the, how to use it is essentially the same as the other par parallel um, launches um, is in terms of syntax, at least. It calls a par uh, Cocos single instead of a Cocos parallel for parallel reduce. And it takes in an execution policy like type, in this case, a per thread. And you will have to pass in the team, um, team the same team member um, generated from the team policy that this um, execution um, lies in, and then followed by a other a founder that will be responsible for this particular, um, in this case, thread, but you can put per team and then it'll be executed per team. Yeah, so the, the lower example will use a per team. The upper example was per thread. Okay, um, yes, so let's try the next example, um, the exercise. Um, the, the exercise is located under the team vector loop. And again, there is going to be a begin and a solution directory. Start, let's start with uh, the begin. Um, use a Coco single to replace um, the if loop that only that restricts the execution to be once per team. And then use the team vector, um, the, the team vector, no, the thread vector range that uh, was specified before to parallelize all three loops. It's a, the exercise is essentially an addition from what we had before in the previous exercise. It just now has an extra loop called elements. So yeah. And also experiment with the uh, different values of S and different values of N to see the difference in the bandwidth. And let's take another 10 to 15 minutes on this. Um, yeah, let's move on unless anyone needs more time on this. Um, let me know. Okay, yes. Yeah. So here is what the solution might look like. It should be similar to the solution, the ones in the solution directory. Um, yeah, so here we have a team policy constructed again with a size of E this time, the, uh, the outermost loop, and then uses Cocos Auto for the team size, and then the vector length um, is specified based on the, the vector length that's going to be useful for the, the thread vector range later on down the line. Um, and then the, within the lambda, each value of E will be given to the, each team here. And then the parallel reduction will need to happen for the team thread range like before, but in this, this time it will be over the loop of J. And then internally in the last, in the innermost loop, we use a thread vector range uh, over the size of M, all the columns, and um, it will do the internal computation, um, do the reduction across, um, accumulating to a value of a temp M, which will be for this particular team. And then within uh, the, the team, um, the threads within the team that's responsible for the vector range. And then the, it will contribute to this value using um, temp n, which will be for the value for this particular team. And then lastly, using the single Cocos single stroke construct here, we will do a per team operation, and then update the value of uh, the update, update the value of update um, with a value of team of n from each team, and then the contribution will go into this last result. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, yes, this does say um, capture by reference, but um, it, it can use capture by value. And yeah, and the recommended is to use a capture by value for the internal 
um, groups. Okay, so here is a um, short uh, short output for uh, the exercise you just did. Um, yeah, and then this is again using a relatively older um, architecture, so the actual bandwidth will differ from the modern architectures. But the general trend is that we see a little bit uh, of a bump in the bandwidth for across the all number of threads. And then the number of thread, uh, the higher bandwidth is achieved with the lower uh, number of rows as well to start with. We recall that we have to re reach something like a thousand rows uh, before when well, we need to uh, reach that bandwidth. Now uh, we do have extra loop, but uh, and between the two level um, implementation and three level implementation, the three levels using the last loop, uh, last threading loop of a thread vector range, uh, we do accomplish a, um, a bit higher bandwidth across all number of rows. Okay, so as in summary, the hierarchical parallelism can be achieved when you find any form of hierarchical work in your um, in any algorithm. And then that is uh, that is leveraged using the idea of a thread teams that the team the collection of threads is going to be spawned for a particular set of task. And then in Cocos, that is launched using a team policy. And then this particular work set can be nested using parallel four or parallel reduce or scan using the team thread range, team vector range, and also the team. Um, team thread range, thread vector range, and team vector range. And also one thing to note is that um, in recent implementation of Cocos, we also provide the MD versions of these um, team ranges, similar to how there's a range policy and then the MD range policy. There is a, each of these have corresponding uh, MD versions of it, like team thread MD range policy uh, to work with the multiple um, dimensions for each of these. Uh, policies. And lastly, we also introduced the Coco single pattern that can limit the, um, that can restrict the execution of a particular function or functor to be a per team or per thread basis. So that will, that can also be used at the end of each or at the end or any, anywhere within the um, team policy execution uh, parallel region. Um, within a per team or per thread policy. So I think that concludes this section. Any questions on this? Okay, I think that's the end of my section. I will now 